Hi everyone, it's Linda from Linda's Ease in Arlington Heights and my camera person, Debbie. Hello. We are really glad to be here because I'm going to do a little fun thing for you on shirts and the cowl mix. But before I get into that, I want to show you our quilt of the day, okay. which is a real, real soft and plush. Oh, it's something that we could have used uh, for the last three, four days. <laughs> Unfortunately, spring in Chicago has been very cold. And yesterday we had two, our, well, we have tulips out there too, but we had daffodils, beautiful yellow daffodils with about three inches of snow all covering around them. <laughs> so this is one of the wonderful cuddle things that and would be great when you're doing it. Can I say the name? It's you called can. It's called Bear Claw. And I think you know why, that little bear applique. And this is all cuddle fabrics. And on the back, it's uh, imitation um, sheepskin uh, fabric. So yeah, it's, it's just beautiful and it's so soft and Ooh, love it. The Buffalo plaid is so <laughs> gorgeous. So we have kits available at Linda's Ease and online. So you can just click and now get tell, one of these. Tell them how they did the binding on here. Cause this is such an easy one. So it's done, it's done like an envelope. Basically you lay out the, um, the, the you, in this case, you'd lay out the red and black Buffalo plaid and then you'd have the piece, it would be longer and wider than the um, sheepskin. And you would insert into the, the envelope in each corner, right here, right in here. all four corners, the uh, pieces of the, the um, sheepskin. And then you, well, there, there's a lot of pinning involved. So there, there is technique involved in this, but it's so awesome once you get them done. I've made a few of these and I just love it. And the interesting part is that the um, the way it's finished is just the serpentine stitch, right? That, well, you can use a zigzag or a serpentine okay. or any kind of a decorative, but yeah, that's uh, probably okay, the easiest we'll one is let's get close. a close-up of the serpentine. And it doesn't even show on the other side, but it's such a pretty decorative stitch to hold everything together. And there's no uh, batting in there. It's just two layers of the so um, cuddle. And it's really <laughs> soft and warm and cushy and great. And I love the little bear at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, it's so cute. Okay. okay. So let's go on to what we're going to do today. Uh, I have a couple of things that I want to show you about uh, patterns and tracing. Many people have been asking about what I've been wearing. And you know, most of the things, in fact, everything I make has been, uh, or wear, has been made. And this is a cowl neck, and the shirt is actually called the Little Princess. Mm -hmm. I know. Can I it's a little it? bit more modern than a Little Princess there, but it's really cool. And there is an actual seam down the, you see, it's like a little gusset, but the entire thing has really been done on a serger. There is one straight can stitch on here on yeah. and a straight stitch here, so but the, gusset, right? the inside you can see is all done on the serger. So what I'm going to show you, because again, Something like this we would be doing in our video studio. We gave you a little taste on one of our videos with Sue Ellen doing uh, the By Annie, which was just wonderful. I hope wonderful you really video. appreciate it. Yes. It was a longer video because it takes a long time. To prepare. When, right. When we're doing something like I'm going to show you today, if I were to do the whole shirt, it would take about an hour to uh, do the video because I would like you to see it in every single stage and every step. So what I'm doing today is just showing you about a cowl. Some of you do sew quite well. You can see this is on the fold. And I want you to be able to do that on any shirt that you own. Mm -hmm. It would be real simple, any t-shirt, and you can mm -hmm. have it as a stand-up or whatever it would be. So first of all, you have to start out with a nice knit. Now these happen to be the stock knits that I have used many times. I know you, you've you heard me talk about them. I think and we have hundreds nice. of these at the we store. We really do, they're, they're just beautiful. And we also have some lycra knits like this, but these usually when I make up a sample, they're gone almost yeah. immediately. We get a lot of these fabrics in from designers and at the end of their line, uh, they'll call us and say, you know, I have 10 bolts. We'll just take them. We sometimes we don't even know what they are because they're so reasonably priced. So you always have to keep checking to see what's there. But I do have knits that we carry all the time. And I do want to show you how to use them because I think it'll be great. I, if you haven't had a serger up to this point, after you see some of the things we're going to do, I know you're going to want one. First of all, there's different stretches in knits. See, this is, you can see it's going across like this. Mm -hmm. Now look at this one. See, it's not quite as much mm -hmm. because the stretch really goes this way. 
Uh -huh. See now they do, this is a two-way stretch, but the stretch, the biggest stretch is the crosswise. Now on these different ones, you're gonna see that as we get into it, this is a Lycra, and it has a Lycra, um, and this is all Lycra, I believe, and a little bit of poly. Mm -hmm. And it has a very big two-way stretch, which is nice to use. So I can do a big cowl on this. Now, on the shirt that I had on the other day, this happened to be uh, just a regular shirt, regular t-shirt shirt, and instead of doing just a fold over or a little piece of uh, Should we show um, this one? Oh, the one right behind you over there has a fold over. Yeah, I do have one that I did, uh, that we did just take and fold it right over. Can you see the surge stitch right there? Very nice. See, we just folded it over. Now, on this one, we did it like it was done in the store because we copied this from a design. But normally I do a little bit different stitch. This is real quick and easy. You do have to have a little stretch stitch when you do that on the machine if you're gonna turn it over and do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but say that I did not want to have this opening like this, I wanted a little cowl on it. Well, then I would have cut the pattern up a little higher and then I would attach this cowl to it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. I think this will be a fun thing for you to um, see. And if you're a beginning sewer, don't worry about what I'm showing. You're still gonna learn some technique, <laughs> okay? okay? So Debbie, if you wanna come over here, I'm gonna go over to the cutting table. I have this wonderful um, Alex Anderson there. Quilter Select. Select. Um, and the K England ruler. <clears throat> right, and what I'm gonna do, this ruler, I want you to be able to see the lines on here. It's green and pink. And it really will, it, it's cut straight right now. So I can go ahead, it's crosswise, parallel, and lengthwise, and, and uh, horizontal. So what I'm gonna do is cut this evenly all the way around. Now when I go to start, there's a little button here on my rotary cutter. All I do is press it in the, see that opens up, and I don't even have to touch it. I could do it right as I start. Yep. And I hold, watch how I hold my hand on this ruler, because this is not the the one like this that has the little non-slip on it, but it is a wonderful, wonderful ruler because yep. it's got the crosswise, lengthwise, it's got the, the um, eighth inch and the quarter inch Careful all the way that across. Blade, Mom. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now watch how I'm holding my hand. Do you see how I put my end at my um, little finger there and my thumb and the rest of my fingers. And I really hold it down. And now I'm gonna cut straight across so that it is really gonna be accurate. Ooh. So now I have a nice straight piece. And what I'm gonna do with this before I determine, I'm going to sew these two pieces together. I'm gonna make a seam and I'm gonna do that on my serger. Now, I started this to show you already. This is a four thread. This is the new Baby Lock Triumph that you know everybody loves. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you can get me here standing up in the camera too. Mm -hmm. But I'll show you a little bit. Yeah, so got the foot see. pedal down there. That's a nice four thread. I mean, that's, see how nice and stretchy it is? And I did this on the outside. Of course, you wouldn't want to do that. You would want to take it like this. Right sides together. And we'll put it right under again. And we'll go ahead and, and grab it a nice little, that's going to evenly go on. I've got a nice little catcher down here. Yeah, let's catch it off. Loose ends. So now I have, now what am I going to do with these? They're going to get caught in my next seam, but say they were open, I have something called Fray Check. If you don't own Ooh, Fray Check. Hold it steady. Oops. There you go. You definitely want Fray Check. It's a wonderful, we have a couple different kinds. But oh, let me show that one too. The, the oh, Fray Checks are okay. really cool. So now what I've done is I'm folding that seam. I would press it and I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to take it to the, um, the I'll, I'll press that right now. And then say that I want this to be, I'm going to measure however um, wide. Say that the opening of the shirt that I'm going to put this on is um, 24 inches. You absolutely don't want any less than 20% for your opening here, so for your um, cowl. So say that 19 inches would be 20%. So that way you will have it be in a smaller, op the cowl will be smaller than the opening of the neckline. And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna actually put it on, but say I do a, a seam like from here to here. 
I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to show you something that's really important when you're doing a cowl. Let's do both of the seams. Now, usually when I'm doing a cowl, this will be on the fold. Usually I have enough fabric that I can put this side on the fold. But on this particular piece, I didn't have enough. So I will need two seams. Okay, so I'll put that down again. I'm trying to be out of the way to sew this. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit over. I mean, this is so wonderful. It, it's just automatic tension every single time. You can see it nice and stretch. Now what I will do is I will fold these to the right side after I press them, and I'm not going to do that right now. Um, and then once those are pressed together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin them into fours. I'm going to pin this. We have already know that this will be half because we have the two seams. And then we're going to take half of this. And I'll just put a little clip on here and a little clip on here. And now we know that we've got this neckline, this kind of loose cowl that is marked into four pieces. So what I'm going to do, and again, I don't have a shirt here to show with it, but um, you know, I'll take one yep. that, um, say I, were going, I was going to put this cowl on here, and this neckline was, you know, quite a bit smaller maybe yeah uh, bigger oh bigger okay yeah. then what I would do I would measure I take my um, tape measure which, which was there. right there there it is and I would start at one of the seams and I would measure all the way around this um, including the seams and measure the whole opening and say this opening was 24 inches and this piece was say 19 inches I would take this 19 piece, inch piece, which is bigger than 19. I would go ahead and divide it into fours. Then I divide this into fours and this piece would go on top of that. And it will go right on top of the raw edge. I'll, I'm not the seam in the it. shoulder, maybe, right? right? The seams and in the then, shoulder? Right, the seams at the shoulders. And then you can see that the raw edge would be on the inside and the nice cowl, let's do the raw edge on the inside and the nice cowl will be at the top, just like this. You can see there is a raw edge there. Oops, sorry. Got it? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the nice folded edge at the and top. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> I, I hope that makes a little sense. Um, you will have to do some measuring when you put something on, but the reason I like to show this is I have a lot of variety in the different shirts that I'm wearing because of the fact that I can do that with the uh, necklines. Do you see on this neckline? <clears throat> see, it was quite wide, but it looks like it's a, a fairly narrow uh, top. And the reason, and see how long I made this? It's quite, I think on this one, it was, um, okay, six and a half inches, and with the seam allowance, it would have been probably- um, 13 and a half or 14. Yeah, 14. Mm -hmm. And then that's doubled. You know, 14 is the double, because you this is on a fold whereas this little one that I just made is only um, three two inches so more like a turtleneck than right. a cowl yeah it's almost mm -hmm. like a, a cow or a um, yeah mock turtle mock which mm -hmm. would be really fun mm -hmm. so I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea what you can do now if you don't want to make a towel a, a cowl you could do this you could take this infinity scarf uh -huh. right that is here now we just did the edge of the shirt and turned it over and did the uh, serge stitch on it but then i took the long strap and of course it's going the stretch is going this way and we turned it before we put it together so it was twisted so now you can take this and put it over as a cowl neck or mm -hmm. as a um, accessory a shirt yeah mm -hmm. i mean it's just a really uh, easy thing to do to make your wardrobe look a little simpler and a little bit easier. Another thing that I think is really important that you need to see, most of our patterns that we carry come with all the sizes in one pattern. This happens to be a pajama pattern. I could not find the top to this little princess. <laughs> the pattern, you mean? Yeah. But it's on our website. But when you when you look at it and you get it, 
you'll see that there's all different sizes on there. Well, you want to find, and you'll try it a couple different times, and maybe you want to make it a little shorter, a little longer. Um, most of the time I don't do these tails on mine because I'm shorter. I like to bring them across straight. So if I'm doing that, I have something here. Let me carry this. Let me make sure it gets on the website for you. And it's a pattern tracing material. And you see how lightweight it is? Mm -hmm. You can literally take, you know, I, I buy it in four yard pieces. Actually, I buy it in 20 yard pieces. But whatever they have available, and I don't know, I'll bring it over to the board here so you can see this a little easier. You see how you, it's tracing paper. And you can trace your size so that this will be your master, paper, uh, master pattern. pattern. And then this will be the one that's adjusted for you that you will use all the or time. You put your name you on it. You can make it in all sizes at that point then right. too. Right, right. Mm -hmm. If you happen to do Instead like... Instead of cutting up the master pattern. Right. If you happen to have had a lot of chocolates this week. <laughs> yeah. Which I have. Make the bigger size. Yeah, then it gets to be a bigger. Sometimes you might want two patterns. <laughs> so um, that, I think that gives you a little bit of an idea of what we're talking about. I had another piece here that I wanted to show you too. This, I think it's real important that you realize that the ruler is great for cutting. Uh, even with knits, I like to have them relax a little, but you can see on the board here, I'll put it up here and I've got a nice straight line here. <clears throat> that's the uh, 18 do... by 24 cutting board here. That's very convenient. Yeah, and this, this ruler is wonderful. And you know what I can do very easily because I have the, the room here, is I can just turn this around for you to see. And you can see now what I'm going to do. I'm going to take and just even it up as much as you can. There, and see, I'm evening that. Now let's see if I want a longer strip. I can go along here. I line up my green lines. Now, do you see how these lines on the bottom are all lined up even? If you look at the side, they're all lined up even. And look at the top. It's all lined up perfectly. And I want to do a four inch strip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this and you see how I'm holding this straight across. And there you've got your perfect strip. So you can do all kinds of things with this. You can use it as a belt. You can use it as a mock turtle. Uh, you can cut it into pieces. I mean, there's just some really important things. Uh, a lot of times these shirts have the little mock um, binding on the sleeve, which is really nice to do too. And again, you start out primarily by working with your foredge, all of your seams. In fact, let me show you on another shirt. Your seams are always done with that four edge, four, four, four thread over edge. Or you could do a five thread on here too. So it looks mm -hmm. really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Real stretchy and just, it holds up like you wouldn't believe. Now, <clears throat> the um, last thing that I am going to show you here are these clips. I wouldn't be without these. I know a lot of you have been using them. When you're using them with a serger, you remember, this, it, it'll stop, it just won't go. There's a blade here. And you wanna pull that out before it gets up there because it will kind of pucker your fabric. The great thing about a serger is that if, say that I did this and put it on here and I start sewing and this is gonna cut this off and I forget, see I get up to here, don't worry about it. It will, it's, gonna, it's very forgiving. And that seam, see how it kind of went out a little bit now instead of straight? So I could straighten that out again if I needed to, which I probably would. But you just cut it right off again. And again, you'll have a nice even edge. So that, I hope, is giving you a little bit of a, a taste of what we're doing. The um, stock fabrics, like I say, are wonderful. We have hundreds of them at the store. And you yes. know what they're doing? They're doing some virtual things right now until we're actually able to have people come in. At this point, we can't. But they can do a FaceTime or a virtual. Skype um, or. Yeah, they can walk you through what fabrics. Or they could even take a video. No, I will yeah. tell you right now, we're extremely busy. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I know it's frustrating for some of you. You're trying to get through on the phones with us, but. 
Thank you. <laughs> Email, do that. We, <laughs> we will work with that. Anyway, the, um, the video studio will be coming when this is all over. We have it almost ready to go. It was almost done. <laughs> yeah. And that will be, you will love it. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah. You're going to, I'm not going to spoil all of the things mm -hmm. that we're doing, but we'll kind of give you little tips. And tomorrow, our next video, I hope to have some more information about what's going to happen next week. Okay, so right. have a great day. <laughs> Bye.